Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to start a new little series that I am very excited about. And this series came about because of a couple of you fantastic viewers. I've had multiple, be multiple people ask me to do a video on plants that really not only grow, but thrive in damp, moist conditions. In the horticultural world, we call this plants that like to have wet feet. That means that they like to have their roots in damp, moist conditions. So we're going to start a series about you know, plants that solve problems in your garden. So in the comments below, I would love to hear um, from you some problems that you have in your garden that you would like us to address. Is it dry shade? Is it deer and rabbits? Is it really hot, intense hot sun? Like whatever it is, list them in the comments below because we will do a video on those different topics. Also, in this video, because we're going to be talking about plants that really like to have wet feet, if I, this is not going to be an exclusive list whatsoever. I'm going to name, give you three annuals, three perennials, and three shrubs. There are tons more plants that will absolutely thrive in these conditions. So if you have experience and you're like, oh, well, I have that situation in my yard and these plants do really well. Share that with all of us, please, in the comments below. So I really hope that we can grow as a community within these types of videos and share from um, our experiences and share with one another so that we can learn some best plant practices from each other. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Now, again, these are, this is not an exclusive list. There are going to be tons more plants. And in this situation, when we talk about wet feet, typically you're going to think about in the landscape, right? Because containers by default tend to be very well draining. Not to say that these plants can't go into a container, but by and large, we're talking about areas in your garden that stay, for whatever reason, historically wet. Maybe it is just simply the way that the land falls. So every time it rains, water goes here. Maybe it's drainage off of a driveway or a gutter, or you just have natural water bubbling up from the ground like we do have here at Creekside Nursery. So first, in our annual category, one of the best things that we have found, and it was because of a customer that we were trying to help solve this exact problem with her, is the sweet alyssum. Um, so there are multiple ones within like the Proven Winners family. There is Snow Princes, there's White Knight, there is the new Violet, at night. And these are beautiful annuals that are very low growing and they tend to spread out. They're going to have a beautiful, delicious fragrance, but they really do like to have damp conditions. Our uh, sweet friend uh, and customer Janice, she has an area right off of her driveway. If it rains or they wash a car or whatever, right? That area just holds moisture. She had tried tons of things and so um, I get the pleasure of kind of helping her design her th this area every year and planting it and so we have tried the sweet alyssum in there and it is stunning. It is gorgeous. It is that area does not even need irrigation because obviously it's a very wet area but it just provides a beautiful ground cover that she can then go behind with you know like petunias or other plants that maybe are a little bit in the drier area some angelona that's in those drier areas but that sweet alyssum does really really well. So Look for the different types of sweet alyssums. There's a lot out there and it really just depends on the color and the vigor that you like. The Violet Night is relatively new and it is a beautiful, nice, rich purple. And then you've got like the Snow Princess and the White Night that of course are pure white flowers. So sweet alyssum is definitely one. Second, impatience. Impatience sometimes are very much underused in our gardens, but they really do like to have and can thrive in those conditions with wet feet. Now, it really doesn't matter if you have sun or shade because there is going to be an impatient for you. Some of my all-time favorite shade impatience is the Rocapuco series from Proven Winners. They come in a whole range of colors. There is white, there is apple blossom, there is orange, there is wisteria, there's like a, a red. I can't even remember all the different colors, but you name a color, basically they are going to have it. And the Rocapucos are so much fun because they are a double bloom. And a lot of times people will just glance at it and think there is some type of like a petite rose. 
and I have grown Rockapuco impatiens in the shade for many years and last year uh, the purple one just did exquisite for me and underneath my forest pansy in that shade bed again that bed is relatively new I was trying to figure out the irrigation and I had some pretty wet areas they thrived and did fantastic so look for the Rockapucos for your shade gardens and then for your sunny areas the sun patients are wonderful we have done sun patients for many years in, in various locations whether you want like the compact white the compact deep purple um, there is a red there is a tropical with a hot pink but those sun patients of course will obviously be a little bit taller than your shade plants but they get that just nice big presence in your garden and just bloom non-stop can really handle those damp conditions so look for impatience whether it's for sun or for shade in your wet areas and then lastly is petunias so pet petunias i mean they are just like you want them about flower power that is what a petunia will give you and they really do like to have can handle i won't say even light but they can just really handle having those damp conditions so of course if you are looking for the most impact in the landscape you cannot go wrong with the super petunia vistas from proven winners those are by far the absolute most vigorous petunias out there on the market and for me the industry standard is bubble gum you just cannot beat bubble gum every year i faithfully plant my bubble gum in the bank bed between the greenhouse and the barn down at the retail portion of the nursery and this area will because it is on a slope we have natural springs that come up so it really stays damp especially like in early spring and summer there is just moisture coming out of that they love it and they thrive so the vista series is going to be your most vigorous of course you can do the bubblegum which is the classic pink you've got silverberry which is a beautiful white with pink veining you have snowdrift which is just a pure white you've got the um, fuchsias and the paradises that are gorgeous pinks and then the new jazzberry which just has a little bit of a raspberry purple hint to it if that's too vigorous for you then the mini vistas work really well too nice petite air, uh, footprint on them but flowers galore and then of course there are tons of other super tunias that don't fall into that category of vista or mini vista so bordeaux is wonderful royal velvet um, we've got honey and just a whole host picasso in purple lots of different petunias are out there um, of course we are huge fans of the proven winners petunias so we use those throughout our landscape and just give you lots of big flower power in the landscape or containers but especially can handle those wet conditions so those are my three annuals for um, plants that do love to have wet feet now on to perennials now perennials just as a little recap i know you know this it's just a recap perennials technically are plants that will live for two years or longer we love perennials because typically every year that they're in your garden they just get bigger and better every single year so that's the difference between annuals they are for one season perennials two years or more in your garden without a doubt when I was coming up with this list the number one plant that came to my mind was the perennial hibiscus the summerific series from proven winners without a doubt they really love to have wet feet in fact they perform best when they receive consistent loads of moisture personally i have uh, when i first started growing the summerifics i had them in areas that were not on irrigation and then i really was not supplementing water with them very much and they performed and they were beautiful but it wasn't until a sweet friend of mine she had one at her house and it was in a really wet area and that thing instantly got massive and continuous blooms over it all summer and i was like what are you doing different than i am and she was like i don't know it just gets lots of water and i was like ding ding and even on proven winters it listed as a bog plant when you put the summerific hibiscus in those really and i don't they don't have to be like soaking wet we're not talking about like saturated right we're just talking about where it stays generally moist 
they perform their heads off. They will grow rapidly. They will bloom not just for a short window of a couple of weeks, but for months on end. Perfect example of this. Over at the nursery this past summer, we installed some easy scapes. We worked with uh, our friends at Walters Gardens, and basically it's like a recipe, right, for a garden. In that were some summerific hibiscus, and we planted those right in a bed in front of the retail greenhouse. This spot is not on irrigation, but it receives lots of water when we're out there watering the plants that are for sale, right? So when we have containers that are near this flower bed and then even just run off. So this bed historically is a pretty wet area. They grew insanely fast and were just com continuing to produce flowers throughout the entire growing season. The summerifics are wonderful because they come in a whole range of colors and sizes. Some you will have that are short and wide. Holy Grail is an absolutely stunning stunning hibiscus, deep, rich, red flowers on a dark foliage, stunning. My new favorite one that is coming out this year is Lilac Crush, where it is more upright and narrow than it is wide with beautiful kind of lavender lilac colored blooms on them. And then of course, they are just massive dinner plate flowers. So when you have that sun to part sun area that is in a lot of moisture, receives consistent water, you've got to put a summerific hibiscus in there. It is the easiest plant that gives you just loads of beautiful color throughout the entire growing season. So that would be one of my, like I said, one that came to my mind, first of all. Second, ferns. So you have a shady area that is historically damp. Ferns do marvelously well in those shady, damp areas. And there are a gazillion different types of ferns out there. Some of my favorite are um, Lady in Red. Lady in Red is a lady fern. So it is tall, upright, very kind of soft and feathery. It has beautiful reddish stems to it, hence its name Lady in Red. Beautiful um, texture and movement in your shade garden. So that is a wonderful one. Godzilla. Godzilla is really fun because it is a cross between a lady fern and a Japanese painted fern. So it has the height of a lady fern, but it has the color of a painted fern. So it has some silvers and grays in there. Crested Surf is a really fun Japanese painted fern from Proven Winters. Kind of low and then on the ends of it, it has little frills is the best way that I can describe it. Beautiful traditional painted fern color to it is glorious. Autumn ferns are wonderful as well. Autumn ferns can be a little bit more drought tolerant than some typical ferns, but they still enjoy to have lots of moisture. And they're a great one that is an evergreen, just like a holly fern is an evergreen fern because a lot of times we think of ferns and they are deciduous. They go away in the wintertime, but your, um, your autumn ferns and your holly ferns will stay evergreen throughout the growing season. So if you've got shade, look for ferns. Just as a general rule, those are moisture loving perennials for your shade garden. And then if you've got sun, maybe you want to try out some Monarda. Monarda, of course, is that classic perennial for the cottage garden because it has beautiful flowers on it that are massive attractors for your pollinators and your hummingbirds. It does love to have moist um, growing conditions and those wet feet because it will your mounds will just get nice and big and give you more blooms throughout the growing season. Some of the new series, because in, historically your Monarda will be really tall and then it gets leggy and it'll fall down. It can also be a little bit invasive because it sends out runners. Proven Winners, of course, has uh, taken on the challenge of Monarda and they have several different series where their Monarda is more short and compact and it does not spread and send out crazy rhizomes like our traditional ones. So you can get reds, you can get purples, you can get light pinks, a whole host of those beautiful colors that love the sun. They tend to be um, more deer resistant because they are in that mint family and they have a very lovely fragrance when they're crushed. Deer tend not to like that as much, um, but really does well in damp areas. We have some over at the nursery in an area that's really close to 
our French drain that this area just stays really wet and I am not joking we planted them as gallon containers and those mounds are nice and huge and just absolutely stunning in that early summer when they are blooming so look for those three perennials if you've got any more that you have tried that really survive and thrive in your moist areas remember list them in the comments below share all your successes with us now moving on to the shrubs these three shrubs are definitely ones that we have experience with and have seen great results first we have scentlandia sweet spire scentlandia is a fantastic deciduous shrub that will bring you early spring flowers i say early spring uh, mid spring early summer and they are a beautiful white scentlandia of course has its name because it has a delicious fragrance to it so it'll give you those early blooms in the season and then it has just a lovely presence in your garden because it is more um, upright and narrow so you can absolutely put it in the middle or the back of your flower bed and then you cannot beat the fall color on scentlandia it is a gorgeous deep burgundy red makes a huge impact in the garden it does love those moist conditions and in those moist conditions it will naturalize it will spread it sends out little runners so if you have an area that you want to naturalize then this would be a fantastic option for you if you have an area that you do not want it to spread and you do not want to have runners come around, then maybe Scentlandia is not that one for you. But I just want to give you full disclosure that it is stunning, both in those early uh, flowers in the season and then the fall color, you cannot beat it. And if, like I said, you've got an area naturalized, Scentlandia is the one for you. Sugar Shack button bush. Button bushes are native plants, and but they can be really large. Sugar Shack is a more petite version of a button bush and really thrives again in those bog light, really wet conditions. In those conditions, it will grow rapidly and performs just really well in those those areas. It does have these really fun. They don't even I don't even want to call them flowers because they don't even look like flowers. They look like these. Like if you're looking and this sounds weird but like if you're looking under a microscope at like a germ or a pollen or something that's what it reminds me of because it has such just unique texture to it so when you add that into your garden it just brings a whole different fun dimension to it beautiful pure white and then as the season progresses it will turn a nice brilliant red sugar shack has done really well for us i in fact have an area that i killed a gardenia because it was way too wet I popped in the sugar shack and I saw it grow just with almost before my eyes. Not out of control, but it just really loved that area. And then of course, because you've got those plants in these wet areas, they're soaking up that moisture. So now it's not like as, as a soupy wet mess that it was before, but the plants is, work really well in that area. And then it helps me because it kind of helps dry it up a little bit. And then the last one is Vanilla Spice. And Vanilla Spice is a summer sweet or a clethra. This is oh, a, a, one of my favorite plants. And it sounds weird. I don't even have it in my garden yet, but because we are a grower, um, I have them, of course, in, and we have them in lots of containers to sell to our customers. I have just not had the opportunity to put it in my garden yet. But if you're looking for a shrub that gives you fantastic late summer flowers that smell divine then vanilla spice is the one for you again it kind of reminds you of the um scentlandia and it's kind of in its structure and the flowers but the seasons in, in which they bloom are completely different and then for me the vanilla spice has a much more um, is much more fragrant pollinators go crazy crazy over this so if you're looking for that late summer color you want something for your pollinators in the end of the summer then vanilla spices for you 
also it has stunning brilliant yellow foliage in the fall so if you could pair scentlandia and vanilla spice together you're going to get a very long blooming period because they bloom at different times in the fall it is going to be stunning with the brilliant um, yellow of vanilla spice and that deep burgundy of the uh, scentlandia it, it will be a gorgeous display but all three of those shrubs really thrive having those wet feet wet conditions and like i said in, on some of those cases they will even naturalize and fill in that area so hopefully you have found a plant if you have a damp wet area that will help you in um, in finding that fantastic plant for your area if you want some more of course read the comments below because we're going to have friends share their success stories with us and then of course professor google so that's what i was even looking at i was like okay because i had my ideas but i was even thinking what plants will do well in wet areas I am coming from a perspective of North Carolina, a zone 7B. So maybe if you are in a hotter climate, then maybe some of these plants will work and some of them won't, or you have a whole another list of plants that are an option for you. Same thing if you're in a colder climate. So that's what the beautiful thing about this community is we can share what plants work for us. And if you'll tell us what zone you're in, then that will be even more helpful. So I think this will be a really fun little series that we do that it will help all of us learn of some different plants that can help us solve problems in our garden. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.